Turning the spotlights on ourselves, uh, in fact, uh, we want to get some more reaction to the media's coverage of the economic crisis. So joining me this morning is Farnoosh Tarabi, a senior correspondent for TheStreet.com, Paula Kalajuri, a psychologist and director of the Center for Human Resources Strategy, and Mike Paul, a PR and media consultant. Thanks for having the easy name there, Mike Paul. You win. Uh, <laughs> guys, uh, it, it's a good question. I, I'm hoping that you were able to hear what some of our emailers and our Facebook uh, friends have been saying to us in response to our email question this morning about, you know, the job that we're doing. Um, Mike, I'll begin with you. Uh, sure. What do you think? H how do we do our jobs and, and not depress everybody? Well, look, uh, the media is not only about reporting the news, it's also a business. And one of the things that we know is that fear works. It's the reason why fear is used in political campaigns. It's the reason why uh, fear is used in ad campaigns. And quite frankly, it gets our attention. That doesn't mean that it's happening in the entire country and it affects everybody. For example, one of your reporters said that 1% of America is out of work. That is a high number historically, but that still means that 99% of the people in this country have jobs. But wait, the and unemployment rate is 8.1%. Say that again, I'm sorry? Unemployment rate is 8.1% right now. Yes, yeah, so if it's 8.1%, like, well, we're still talking about 92%. Agreed, but you can either lean towards the number being 8.1, or you can lean towards the number being 21.9, 21 uh, and, and talk about those that still have jobs. Talk about those small businesses that are still doing well. Talk about those large businesses that are still doing well. Okay. Talk about those that are in a stock market that also still have money in it. All right, Paula, what do you think about this? Sure. Heidi, it's, it's not the media alone that is creating the anxiety and the fears. Um, it's also the combination of very salient personal experiences. So you could be saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, but when we walk outside and a piece of the sky falls on our head, we start to listen to those messages a little more clearly. Yeah, so, it hurts. Well, that yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, we're talking that's about really what's creating part of the anxiety. Okay, well, we're talking about 401ks because we hear a lot about that every day. We are listening to our viewers, and we do read those comments uh, very frequently here. Uh, let me ask you, Farnoosh, what's your assessment uh, of the job we've been doing? Well, I think I'd have to agree with, the, what, with your reader who said, uh, I give the journalists a B. You know, Heidi, really, to be a true journalist, it's not just running a business, but you have to service your readers and your audience. Uh, Fear-mongering, yes, that, that grabs your readers' attention, but yeah, at the end of the day, what value... Panic mongering was panic one that, uh, that one of the emailers said, yeah. Right. Th that doesn't service your journalists. You have to provide what is happening. And what is happening is both awful and great. There are stories, heroic stories, of people triumphing in this market. Guess what? Our savings rate is up 5%, the most in 14 years. And we are talking about money in an intimate way. And, of course, now because the economy is suffering, we're talking about money. But guess what? I think that when this economy improves, we are going to see a paradigm shift, and our dialogue about money will continue, and that's a very healthy thing. And Heidi, so I... Go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, one of the things that we need to have is we need to have more tips as to what they should be doing. For example, should people be buying more food versus going out? Mm -hmm. Or should they, be, should they feel pressure to go out and help those small restaurants and businesses in their community? Should yes. they tips be investing in stocks right now, or should they be putting more money into savings. There's a lot of mixed messages out there and they need more help. Well, people can't watch everything. I mean, we know that, but, but they certainly can go about doing their research. In fact, we've had a couple of good stories. Mike, take a look at this. Well, after an eight-month layoff, I've uh, started in the last couple of weeks a contract position. It, it feels good to have a regular routine again. We are lending money and on behalf of my colleagues around the country they're lending money as well. Uh, a lot of people very optimistic that at least at least Wall Street is still capable of responding to good news. And I know the other night on Larry King Live uh, Rachel Ray was there and uh, she was talking about buying up all that chicken when it's on sale put it in the freezer and uh, becoming sort of your own uh, frozen food market if you will. Uh, Paula tell me what can we do better? What can the media do better? Yeah. I think it would be helpful if we could start providing some diagnostics to allow people to evaluate the situation. For example, yes, unemployment is high, 8.1%. But you know what? 91.9% .9 of us have jobs, and many of those jobs are very stable. So it would be extremely helpful for the media.